Tonight, the don't ask, don't tell policy remains under injunction. It is right now not being enforced in the military. After a federal judge indicated that she will decline the administration's request to reinstate the policy while it is being appealed. U.S. District Judge Virginia Phillips put the hold on enforcement of don't ask, don't tell last Tuesday. Today, she said she is inclined to leave that hold in place. She's currently weighing arguments from both sides. She's expected to make a firm ruling, maybe later tonight, maybe tomorrow morning. The Justice Department has said it will ask the next court up, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, to grant the hold if Judge Phillips will not. If the appeals court denies that request, then presumably the administration will go to the Supreme Court and they will likely get that hold then. Whatever happens in the courts and whatever order it happens, it does seem clear that the courts are not going to be able to stop Don't Ask, Don't Tell for long. And the White House made it clear again this weekend that the administration's plan for ending the policy is for the Senate to end it. While the administration may be planning for the Senate to end it, here's what happens when you ask senators about that. I will go as far as the four service chiefs are now advocated that we do. And that is we have a complete and thorough survey as to the impact of the repeal of Don't Ask, Don't Tell. I will be largely guided by the results of that survey. And I respect Secretary Gates, but I disagree with him, not on the grounds of whether it should be repealed or not, but we need to find out what the effect of repeal might be. The reason why they tried to ramrod it through the Senate is they know that the Senate will look different next January. If you tried, if it did come up in the lame duck, and I'll admit legislati legislatively, mm -hmm. I don't know if this is possible, if it did come up during the lame duck session in November, and again, assuming you're mm -hmm. reelected, mm -hmm. would you fill up? It. Absolutely. I will filibuster or stop it from being brought up until we have a thorough and complete study of the effect on morale and battle effectiveness. Joining us once again is a Republican uh, who disagrees with her dad on this particular issue, Megan McCain, the author of Dirty Sexy Politics. Megan, thanks again for sticking with us. Yeah, thank you. Um, the White House keeps saying they expect that the Senate is going to repeal Don't Ask, Don't Tell after the elections. I find that impossible to imagine. Do you think that's going to happen? No, I don't either. I think that the administration should do something about it. Um, it is awkward to sit here and watch my father saying that because I disagree with him. In my family, me and my mother are against Don't Ask, Don't Tell. My father and my brothers, who are both in the military, um, active in the military, are against Don't Ask, Don't Tell. Against repealing um, it? Against repealing it, yeah. And I think, um, you know, it's a complicated place. I think there are lots of families like this across the nation, though. You know, I went to Columbia. Um, I lived in New York City for five years, and I just, I feel differently about this issue than my father does, and it's very hard for me to sit and watch that because I still do think it, it's a civil rights issue. Yeah. And I think if somebody can go and fight for my country and die for my country, I don't really care on any level what they do in their private time. You've been very open about your your differences with your dad about this, but you, your, your own strongly held feelings about it. You've written about your frustration with the Obama administration not doing more to get rid of the policy. And you've said that people should hold politicians accountable on this. Mm -hmm. What do you think that means? Does that mean voting against people who don't share your civil rights view? Does that mean demonstrations? Does that mean petitioning people? What do you think? I mean, you're a senator's daughter. What do, you, what do you, from that vantage point, what seems effective to you in terms of moving people on this issue? My frustration is that I consider myself on some level a gay rights advocate, but the gay community doesn't seem to want a straight Republican in any way talking for them. I've had mm. pushback from other places. I can communicate in a way with middle America and Republicans that I don't think a liberal person in New York City necessarily can. This doesn't make it right or wrong. I'm just saying I think we should communicate in different ways. And when we say hold politicians, Obama made a lot of promises to the gay community. And I remember on election night thinking, at least now, gay marriage will probably be kept passed in this country with this man elected president. So I just think that we have to hold him more responsible. And there seems to be this letting him get away with it. And he continues to make these promises. And well, I don't know. I think know. there's a lot of anger against him among, I mean, I hear a lot of it from gay rights advocates, people who are very frustrated with him. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, it's... And listen, there's a yeah. whole more drama going on between gay Republicans because they're two separate organizations that are sort of battling each other out. So it's everywhere. It's not a simple issue. Well, you've been, you and, and Mark McKinnon, some other people that I've talked to have been very vocal on this issue. Let me just play you something. This is from Colorado Republican Senate candidate Ken Buck. Sure. Ken Buck, um, on Meet the Press this weekend. Just watch this. Do you believe that being gay is a choice? I do. And based on what? Based on what? Yeah. Well, you believe that? Um, I guess you can, you can choose who your partner is. You don't think it's something that determined at birth? 
I, I, I think that um, birth has an influence over, like alcoholism and some other things, um, but I think that uh, basically you, you have a choice. Yep. You, uh, and as I say, Mark McKinnon, some gay Republican groups have been out there arguing for the Republicans to be more moderate on this mm-hmm. issue. This election cycle, it actually has, it seems like it's just gotten a lot worse, mm-hmm. not at all better. It's are there, very sad. It, are there consequences for Republicans for being super anti-gay, though? Does that, do you think bad happen to them politically when they're very anti-gay? Um, I don't know, actually. I think it's bad just culturally, and you mm-hmm. do see it a lot from Republicans, but even this Carl Palladino statements are, again, it just goes from being, I'm against gay marriage, and I'm um, against Don't Ask, I'm for Don't Ask, Don't Tell, and, but I'm a bigot as well. Like, to me, it filters into this territory, and we have this whole gay suicide epidemic going on with teenagers. I don't think, in the same way that I think when you see a woman's weight criticized in the media, I don't understand how it can't not have an impact on gay teens. Yeah. And you're seeing the results right now. I just worry culturally where we're at in general. And this man, you know, says he thinks being gay is a choice. I think it's been scientifically proven, and most people <laughs> believe that it is you're born gay. So I don't know. It just, also, it's just hard the idea to watch. That it's like alcoholism, you know. It's um, again, it filters. It's just like one step for me into homophobia. <laughs> Megan McCain, the author of Dirty Sexy Politics. It's always a real pleasure to have you, you on the show. I wish I had the answers. No, it's I okay. Wish I had more answers. Sometimes the answers are asking harder questions. So you, you definitely got that. Thank, Thank you. Thank you.